I actually set out right at the outset to create a building that would be a landmark. And the advantage I had this time compared to any other time is that I was also my own client. The name is called Kusulad. And when you see the building, when you see images of the building or when you're there in person, the name is self-evident in fact. It almost has been named itself. The building was designed for myself and my family. That is my mom, my wife and uh, my brother and his family. Just five members. But more importantly, it's, we are all people with varied interests. So the building is in fact designed such a way that it can be what, what is called an op almost like an open plan. So which means the building can be, uh, can be multi-purpose or multi-use. The site is in fact called Andapura and in, in the local dialect it actually means the place of verandas. The site is on the edges of Bangalore City Corporation, okay, surrounded by orchards, etc. This is north and this is south. And uh, the site is uh, around uh, half an acre, that means around 25,000 square feet of site. In fact, all my other projects also to a larger or smaller extent follow the same philosophy. And that philosophy or ideology is called paleo-modernism. Paleo simply means original or first. The point is to have something that is modern and yet it is superimposed on which is the paleo part, which means a modern building yet embedded in history. In the initial plan was uh, the site would not have a compound wall because from the road I want the eye to travel across the site to the orchards behind. It means if somebody was here, okay, they would be able to see without any barrier right up to here. But of course, practical and security reasons for it. So eventually we had to build a, a wall right in front. Okay, though there also we tried to keep, as much as possible, try to keep the wall of glass as well as brick both. Viewer will actually come in from here. He passes through this, he'll see this grand staircase. There's a gate here, but he'll come up here and this is the main entrance. The main entrance is, is as I mentioned earlier, bordered by two windmills. They're around 50 feet high. They're actually the same height as your these two towers, the Stelia of the Mind and the Soul. So they also form a quadrangle, so to speak. And these two towers act as a gateway. So you enter from via this way and you have two routes you can traverse, either clockwise and is clockwise. Two sides of the entrance are two uh, alphabets. In fact, it's a part of an art cell called Britism, where the written word is used to create impression of the mind. So you have two words here, how and who. The reason we use these two words is because these are kind of quintessential questions, who and how. So you come in here and then you climb these staircases, the building's four feet high and then you have columns are made of single layers of glass. That's why and I have two or three layers of glass. So it gives you the effect of what is called the hypo style hall. So then you enter through this, uh, the colonnade and this hall in the main building is what I call the hall of the western sun. The entire room is 30 feet by 40 feet almost equal to sometimes the uh, entire site. At the crooks of the, of the entire site, you have this line space, it's a white line. It is, in fact, a lot of the building here actually connects to pop culture. The line is actually from, uh, it's called Arsalan, and it actually connects to this Narnia books of C.S. Lewis, who's one of my favorite writers. This is, of course, double helix staircase. To reach the same floor, you have two levels of staircases. Now, why do we do that? Obviously, you need only one, stair one flight to reach up. But here we did double flights to, to actually go in with the theme of the building, which is paleomodernism, and to fix with what is called the double helix of the human DNA. It doesn't exactly follow the pattern, but the inspiration is still there. So you have this glass staircase with white marble. Behind the line, actually, you have two water bodies. Okay, you have a small fountain inside uh, where there are fish. And here you have again a tribute to a classical architecture where you have two layers of columns. In fact, the entire point was to make it theatrical, dramatic, poetic, romantic. That is the entire point of the entire building. Okay, so you have not have a crystal chandelier, but again a modern chandelier. But right at the top of here is you find a piano, a white piano. There's an adventurous story behind the piano. We wanted a white piano. There was one guy selling a white piano in Trichinopoly, in uh, Tamil Nadu. It's a German piano. He got it from some German missionary who was there. So we had to go there, get the piano, and bring it back to Bangalore. And then, before the building of the glass was installed, we had to install the piano. So it had to be logistically planned. The floors were there, the glass was still not installed. We had to bring in a crane. Okay, the crane actually lifted the piano, brought it up here, brought it all the way here, and then 
shifted it there. And then we bolted the piano down so that tomorrow also the piano by, by mistake also will not roll away. So the building has is, is a cluster of around five buildings. Now why a cluster of five buildings? Again, simple, we are in Andapura. It's almost let's say on the border of a city and a village. And in a village layout, buildings are clustered all around. So which means you had the main house, which is the protagonist wing, but there are also supporting characters, so to speak. You have what is called a library, which I call the stele of the mind. Tele is like a term, like something similar to a totem or a tower. Okay, and this entire 50 feet uh, tall building is, in other words, the library. There, it is actually symmetrical with another building on the other side, which is the stele of the soul, which is a prayer tower. And like all other buildings in the uh, layout, the building is set on a pedestal around three feet high. It not only gives it a certain kind of weight and gravitas, but also prevents any kind of rodents as well as rain water from entering, even in the most heaviest of rains. As we enter into the building, if you come to this particular space, okay, you actually come in here, as, to, as I mentioned earlier, it's a 50 foot tower, but it's almost like a minaret in a masjid or like the Taj Mahal, where you have these bookshelves, okay, these bookshelves which go right up to another 20 feet. And you have these staircases, this is how people actually climb the building, you know, the staircases are fixed to it, so they actually climb to put the books right on top. See the space up there, because this is crowned by a stained glass. You have a prayer tower or a condemnation room or meditation room, which I call Stele of the Soul. We also use something called a pinhole camera principle. But it's camera, what is called a camera obscura. At certain times of the day, when the sun around, around 3.30 in the, in the evening after, okay, there's a small hole in the wall. At around 3.30, 4 o'clock in the evening, the sun, on the western sun will hit that small hole. And if you close the door, when it, and when the, in the entire room is dark, within a few minutes, you need to sit there, if the sun is bright enough, you can actually see coming on the wall a shimmering cross. Because that hole actually, the light from outside comes in, that hole is actually put in reverse of a cross. Okay, so when that comes in, so this gets reversed and you actually see a shimmering cross, you know, sitting on the wall. So it is a prayer room, but there is no physical cross. The building is designed around the five elements, earth, wind, fire, water and ether. First, the earth is of course all the greenery around the earth. The wind is of course by the two windmills that, that generate power as well as turn during windy days. The fires between the two windmill stars, you have a fireball. We light them up at night, etc. And ether, ether actually is space where the so to speak god or the gods reside. So that is in the stele of the soul or the, or the prayer tower. The important thing is not just these elements. It is the proportions. Practically all the structures that you have built are designed in the golden mean or square ratios. Which means, if this to this will be either golden mean or square ratios. The distance between this and the tower will be again golden mean or square ratios. Distance between the opening to the tall will be again a golden mean or square ratios. First structure I built was the prayer tower, or the, remember the stele of the soul. We built the outside, we built it up to five feet level, and the inner space only nine feet inside. And even though my AutoCAD drawings, my walkthroughs showed me that would be great, instinct told me it would not. But I still wanted. I thought, okay, let's let's maybe technology is better than the human mind. I built it up to 10 feet height. Realized the space is too constrictive. Demolished it, restarted it, and for that, you know how much nine feet became? Just one more foot, 10 foot. Just for that one foot, I didn't want to compromise. To get the actual proportion site, because remember we have a cluster of five buildings. We often made, let's say, the tower is 50 feet tall. We made the tower with bamboo covered it in a white cloth and then literally moved it around bit a bit here and there to see how it will look, where it will look best. Second thing, glass, because my, I was surrounded by orchards, it made all sense at least as much as possible to get the views. Glass is almost zero maintenance, okay? Okay, uh, as far as building is concerned. Thirdly, most people are simply not aware that glass is an extremely environmental friendly material because it's one of the few materials that can be endlessly recycled without loss of quality or, or, or even loss of clarity. Let's start with the color itself. It's pure, it's serene, it gives you a clean look, and white always may, makes things look more expansive, it looks bigger than it actually is. To my best of my knowledge, we use ST167 Saint Gobain, okay, for the outer surface. I think it was laminated and tempered. 
And inner surface, again, we use ST167 and fluid glass, if I remember, again, laminated. And ST167 is, is a very high performance glass. Okay, and we use it specifically because of that heat reflectivity which I told you. So we went through all the calculations, went through all the numbers, and easily available, more affordable. The flooring is white composite marble. It's got a gloss and a shine, and it's easier to maintain than, than natural marble. Natural marble stains very fast, especially white ones. In fact, even on, on some of the living room walls, we have used what is called Saint Gobain's Planilac glass. My takeaway from the building is if other architects can have takeaways from the building. That means if this can become something that becomes a case study for other people. I'm sure there are things I would have made done wrong. Some things we should not have done. I'm sure they can. And also some things we have done right. Not everything can be copied by architects, but many things can be. And that's hope that and 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 I'll be happiest if somebody copies it.